Good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us for our Mountainside Chat, which is our virtual student town hall that we are starting. On behalf of the Student Engagement and Leadership Center, we just want to say that we are so excited that you're joining us. We hope you are doing well, staying safe, staying healthy, and most importantly, washing your hands. Um, we know that many of us are at home right now, quarantined, and it's a very different situation than many of us expected to find ourselves in. Um, but hopefully through our Mountainside Chats, we can provide you all with some important information from different campus departments. They can give you updates about resources still available for students on campus, and then allow you an opportunity to ask some questions. So we have a couple of departments here that will be presenting information, and then we'll leave some time at the end for you to utilize the Q&A feature. Um, the Q&A feature should be a button at the top of your screen that has a little question. You can click on that and submit a question to our team, and then our team will answer questions. Uh, we may or may not get to all of the questions today, but we will make sure that every question that comes in gets some sort of an answer and that we follow up with you all to make sure that all of your questions are answered. So let's go ahead and get started with our first department. I'm excited to introduce Matt Krauss from the Dean of Students Office. Does it wait to shift over? Good morning, miners. My name is Matt Krause. I'm the Assistant Dean of Students, and it's nice to see all of you. Um, on the slide, the next couple of slides, we're presenting some information from the Dean of Students office. Um, many of you have probably received multiple updates um, from the Dean of Students herself, Dr. Katie McCory Andalus. She sends her regards. We just wanted to go over some quick student support services that we provide in the Dean of Students Office. The next two individuals will talk more about um, direct services that they provide in health and wellness areas, um, but we are really um, a clearinghouse for consultation. So um, a lot of the overview questions, um, things about navigating the university, the Dean of Students Office and our case managers can, and can be a clearinghouse to help you out. I want to first bring your attention to the fact that um, we continue to, in the virtual age, um, reach out to students or assist students through the Dean of Students email. So if you have questions or need help, um, dos at utep.edu, as well as our phone number, area code 915-747-5648, are still very much operational. And we continue to answer questions, um, usually on the hour, um, for students um, daily. So um, from 8 to 5 p.m., we are constantly um, answering questions for students related to a lot of different topics. Um, some examples, as you will see on the slide, um, we've been a uh, clearinghouse for um, students if they have concerns related uh, to COVID-19 and, and assisting students um, if they have questions related to that. Um, we're helping them get connected um, to our environmental health and safety folks. Um, we can help you related to contacting faculty. And as we moved online, we worked with a lot of students um, in helping navigate that process, looking at the withdrawal process, things like that. Um, we are not a counseling agency, but we do provide some guidance or consultation and referrals to counseling. Um, our folks in the counseling center can't necessarily always um, do outreach directly to you. You have to choose um, to enter into the therapeutic relationship. We are not uh, licensed counselors, but we can talk you through options and, and um, services that might be available. And the last point on there, um, a lot of students have come to us um, asking questions about um, financial aid, other policies and procedures, and how they may be adapting. Um, as we have updates, the university is sending information out, but as a Dean of Student Staff, we can help you get to the right person, um, understand the right pot process, or put you in contact um, with the people that can help you do that. Um, there is a nice um, clearinghouse link that if you have questions or you have friends that you just think might be struggling um, through this process, you can go to utep.edu slash report, and there's a nice um, report page called Student of Concern, and it'll allow you um, to essentially give a referral to us. Um, you, we won't necessarily let your friends know you're the one who um, sent it in, but this is an opportunity that if you know somebody who's really not doing well, um, and that may not be physically, it may be emotionally as we deal with this um, and being alone at our house now or in our apartments, um, this is an easy way for you to give us um, information and we can reach out and, and connect with you. The other big way that the Dean of Student Staff really helps students right now is working with resources. We realize that 
Um, COVID-19 is affecting people physically um, and emotionally, but it's also taking a toll economically on our students um, and their families. So if you have friends or you are struggling um, with some of your basic need services, the Dean of Student Staff can help you get connected to some of the processes and procedures that are helping students with that. Um, we do have a very small student emergency fund. We have some other resources and grants that we can get you connected with. And so if you have questions, again, the best way to um, access those is through emailing us at dos at utap.edu. The other huge um, emergency aid or basic need service that I want to talk about is on our second slide. Thanks, Mallory. Um, the UTEP food pantry continues to be open. Um, we are send, seeing between 20 and 25 students e uh, each week at the food pantry, which is less than what we have the ability to serve. So we have plenty of capacity. We continue to stock our, our, our shelves um, and resources in the food pantry. We're open daily from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in Memorial Gym. Um, students just need to bring their student ID. We usually swipe that ID to make certain you're eligible. Um, in this crisis area, we're being very flexible in terms of what that means, but it allows us, um, instead of getting your name and information related to that, the ID gives us all that we need to get you connected um, for non-perishable food items. We also are very lucky right now to have um, a lot of personal care items, toiletries, um, shampoo, things like that. And so if you are a student, an active student um, at UTEP um, or your friends are, please encourage them to go and check out the food pantry. We have social distancing guidelines that are being followed. They just installed some really nice plexiglass to allow um, for us to interact with the students without them feeling um, like they're going to be exposed to someone. So much like when you go to Albertsons or, or the grocery store, um, we have the ability to service you in a very safe and secure way. Um, please, please encourage your student, your friends, um, and if you yourself are worried about food insecurity, please visit the food pantry. Um, if you have more questions, they are also there's also a live person answering that phone at 915-747-8053. I also put on the slide that if you can't make it between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m., we are taking special appointments through the Dean of Students um, website. And so if you um, go to the email dos at utop.edu, we have staff in Residence Life and others that can make an appointment with you in the evening hours or at other times that we can get you access to the food pantry. We really want you to be safe and healthy. And so please utilize the Dean of Student staff as much as you can um, for your questions, concerns, or needs. Thank you. Wonderful, thanks, Matt. Next up to present, we have Daniela Ledma from the Student Health and Wellness Center. Take it away, Daniela. Thank you, Mallory. Good morning, everyone. My name is Daniela Ledma, as Mallory mentioned. I'm representing the Student Health and Wellness Center. Uh, we're going to be going over some of the resources that we're still offering to students and some of the modifications that we've had to make uh, due to the current situation. Next slide, please. So we are still open. We are located at the Union East Building, Suite 100. We have made, however, some modifications. The first and most important one is that students must call 747-5624 for appointment. We are no longer taking walk-ins because of COVID-19. Our hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. until further notice. Um, an additional modification is that only patients are allowed in the waiting area. Do not bring anyone with you to the appointment because they will not be allowed in the clinic. If you do bring family members, they will have to wait in the car. Um, we are providing some health services via phone and through the assessment of a healthcare provider. We are adjusting the telephone visit cost appropriately. Next slide, please. So just as a reminder, some of the available services that we have for students are immunizations, lab services, men's health services, minor injury assistance, nutrition education, physical exams, testing and treatment of sexually transmitted diseases, treatment for common illnesses, women's health services, 
and clinical rotation compliance clearance requirements. Next slide, please. Um, so some of the wellness services and outreach services that we're offering are mainly through social media and on other technology platforms. Um, we are available to provide information on nutrition, overall health, and mental health. So if you have any questions, feel free to send your questions through social media and we will address them. Um, in addition to that, we are offering a weekly yoga and meditation class through Instagram Live. It is every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Let us know if you want us to cover any topic, whether it's mental health, nutrition, overall health, we can get our staff to cover that for you guys. Um, look for our weekly wellness activities on social media and make sure to follow us. We are at UTEP SHWC on Instagram, Facebook. Next slide, please. So we now have a nutrition educator and she is uh, providing weekly nutrition and food related advice. As you have seen on social media, we've also provided tips on going grocery shopping, on eating on a budget. Um, so just look out for all those tips on social media. That's basically where we're posting that. Next slide, please. In addition, uh, we do have a UTEP Counseling and Psychological Services Counselor available as, as, at the Student Health and Wellness Center to address your mental health needs. There, the services are being provided through CAPS, and CAPS is one of the departments that will be sharing with you more information as an expert center. Um, their phone number is 747-5302, so you can call that number to schedule an appointment. Next slide, please. And just a reminder of some of the health tips for this um, specific time period, social distancing, make sure that you keep six feet apart from each other, avoid touching your mouth, nose, and eyes, cover when you cough or sneeze, do not leave your house unless it's for essential purposes, to protect yourself and the others, wear a mask if you're out in public. Now the El Paso City is uh, mandating that everyone who is out in the public should be wearing a mask. We're going to be posting a do-it-yourself mask tutorial later on, so uh, be on the lookout for that. If you are sick, stay home if symptoms are manageable. If you think you need medical assistance, call your medical provider or an emergency room before showing up. They need to be prepared if you do have symptoms. And important, it is important to stay active, eat healthy, and stay connected with family, friends, faculty, and colleagues through electronic means. Next slide, please. So just important reminders about the Student Health and Wellness Center. Yes, we are still open. Our hours of operations are Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. You must first call to make an appointment. Our phone number is 915-747-5624. Walkings are not being accepted, which is why you have to call before showing up. And only patients will be allowed in the waiting room. Next slide. That is all for me. Thank you so much for listening and we'll be having CAPS next. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Daniela. Next up, I would like to introduce Selena Brescher from the Counseling and Psychological Services Center. Take it away, Selena. Thank you, Mallory and Daniela for those introductions. Um, so my name is Selena. I am a doctoral intern at the Counseling and Psychological Services uh, Department. Um, here I have our website. Um, because that's where we're advertising a lot of our now virtual services. Um, we are still open and we're available to support our students, um, whether they're seeking support um, for COVID-19 um, or ongoing frustrations related to adapting to online courses, um, stress management, family management, um, personal well-being. Um, we have counselors available to talk um, in many different formats. Um, we have transitioned to providing services by phone and even online. As Daniela uh, mentioned, we have video conferencing up and functioning. 
Um, so we encourage students to uh, go to our website um, to find updates about our services, um, or you can call. Our number is 747-5302. Uh, um, another thing that I would like to acknowledge about our website is that we have many different uh, resources um, and information about um, downloadable self-help apps, um, community resources. We um, are launching other um, CAPS uh, resources that I'll talk about on the next slide, but I also want to highlight um, we have an Instagram and a Twitter that we're posting updates and encouraging messages. Um, follow us uh, at UTEP underscore CAPS um, and like us on Facebook. Next slide, please. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about how to access CAPS during COVID-19. Um, I did mention you can go to the website, but you could also call our office and um, ask to speak to a counselor. Um, our office is available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, we continue to have on-call counselors available over the phone um, or on video for same-day appointments. Um, we also have after hours um, our crisis and emergency page and line um, that you could contact if um, you know it's after five or before eight um, and so it would just be calling our office number anytime um, and you can speak with a counselor that way as well next slide please Um, this uh, is caps to go We have a new um, page on our website that's dedicated to providing uh, live workshops to students every week. Um, we started it about two weeks ago, um, and we have had many students log on once a week and um, attend some of our outreach workshops related to um, different topics um, about how to adjust to COVID-19. And so um, we've had conversations about anxiety in COVID-19, how to build a uh, structure while during while in quarantine. Um, yesterday was very successful. We also will have um, how to cope with uh, at home quarantine in collaboration with uh, the SGA um, next week. We will be doing in two weeks. We'll be doing uh, how to practice mindfulness during the pandemic. And then our last one will be finding balance. Um, and this is about managing relationships with, you know, your family or those that you're quarantined with. And um, we're even discussing extending out our live workshops um, because they have been pretty successful. Also on our caps to go page, we have additional virtual resources such as um, links for things to do while you're at home. Um, and then we will be posting um, video recorded videos of CAPS counselors providing updates about things that you can do at home or tips for you know managing an anxiety, uh, mindfulness exercises, um, all those will be in a video library. Um, I did want to acknowledge that students will need access to Microsoft Teams in order to access the CAPS to go and the live events. Um, um, not CAPS to go like recorded, but the live events. Um, Next slide, please. Um, on our website, we also have information about um, an online resource that's a self-help guide that CAPS promotes and is affiliated with Tau Campus-Wide Self-Help. Um, and I have the link to uh, how to access Tau. Um, this is a really great tool that any UTEP student can access, um, whether it's on their computer, on their phone. It's very easy. Um, they have modules related to managing anxiety, depression, other concerns. Um, it's very skills based. Um, it teaches you resiliency, communication, problem solving. Um, it's self paced and um, totally free. You just use your UTEP email. Um, it has a fun little video uh, description about why it's useful. And I think it's a good tool to use on your own or to supplement counseling. Um, and then additionally, we will be adding information about virtual support groups that we are launching starting next week. 
Um, I don't have information on the slides, but you can call or email us. Um, call our number 747-5302 or email us um, CAPS, C-A-P-S, at utep.edu for information or to register. Um, our virtual support groups will be open to all students um, or uh, UTEP community at large. Um, our first support group will be this Monday in English from 1.30 to 3 o'clock. And then on Tuesday, we will have a Spanish speaking support group from also 1.30 to 3 o'clock. So for more information, check our website. Also, you can call our office. Um, any and all are welcome to register. Um, and then stay tuned for information about summer therapy groups um, that we will be resuming because that was a big um, sorry, service that CAPS offered um, during regular session and we've had to um, wind down for groups, but we will be resuming um, during the summer in some modified ways, so stay tuned for that information. Um, that's all the information that I have for you all and uh, good luck and take care. Thank you so much, Selena. I want to go ahead and thank all of our presenters today. So again, we heard from the Dean of Students Office, the Student Health and Wellness Center, and Counseling and Psychological Services. Um, so all of our presenters today, thank you so much for sharing this important information for students and our campus community. Um, I want to remind you all that you have the ability to utilize the chat feature in the system. So you can submit questions. I apologize, the Q&A feature in this system. You can submit questions to us that we can look and answer. Um, so if you have a question, something Thing about any of the presentations you heard today or any questions about other things that you want to know more about that will definitely help us get that information to you and answer all the questions that we possibly can. Um, in general, I do want to remind you all that we are here for you. You know, we care about our students, we care about our campus community, and so please know that our university faculty and staff are dedicated to supporting you all through this process. Um, no matter how long it takes, we're going to be here to support you and we care about you, so know that there are a number of resources and faculty and staff ready and willing to help you. Um, we just hope that you reach out to us. Reach out to us and let us know. And if one of us doesn't know, we'll figure out someone who does to make sure you get the help that you need. Um, we're committed to making sure that your experience as a UTEP student um, continues to be successful um, throughout this time. So please go ahead and submit those questions. Um, we do have one question so far. Um, one of the questions is, apart from the information that has been provided, is there anything incoming grad students should specifically be aware of during this time? This is a great question. Um, although we don't have someone here with us today from the grad school, this is a question that we can get some more information on and get back to you with that. Um, our moderator has added some information and some links where you can contact the grad school directly, um, but this is also a great tip for us because we hope to have multiple town halls to provide other presentations and more information for you all. Um, so if we have other questions, please feel free to send those in and we'll start answering those. While we wait for those to come in, I'd like to ask our presenters and our departments here to maybe share one or two questions that you are getting most often from students and what those responses are. Um, can we start with the Dean of Students Office? Do you want to share one or two questions that you all are receiving pretty frequently and what those answers to those questions are? Yes, uh, I would, if I can, I'd like to, to piggyback off the question from the graduate school um, or the graduate student that asked that. I think one of the things that I would encourage um, your colleagues um, in the graduate school, if you're in grad school or you're going to get your doctorate, um, encouraging everyone to check their email. The university is sending all important communication out to your UTEP email. And I think that some of our students are missing out on opportunities um, when they don't utilize um, or check that email. So a good example would be um, the institution gave um, students who were eligible um, a tech grant. Um, they had the opportunity if they were um, struggling with the technology they had, they could apply for that. And that information came out um, via the um, UTEP email for all of them. And so I would encourage everyone in the graduate school, but all UTEP students to be checking that. Um, there are some other aid opportunities that are coming out. Um, many of you know that the Federal CARES Act was passed by Congress and universities are receiving um, some additional aid for students who um, have filled out their FAFSA. And so I would encourage um, students who are asking about 
emergency aid or aid resources that if they haven't filled out their FAFSA for last year or this year, that's a really good um, thing that they can be doing right now to make certain that they're eligible for those things. Um, Mallory, one of the questions we get switching gears um, often right now during registration period is my least favorite question, but some modules related to um, being enrolled as a student. So um, you know, when you uh, transfer in um, as a new first year or transfer student to any University of Texas school, you are required to do our community of care modules, but also there are two modules that will come out um, in the summer, I'm sorry, well, late summer in August um, related to sexual assault prevention um, and for non-grad students, for undergrads, alcohol awareness. Those modules do not are not active. And so if you're seeing those holds on your account, they are not active. You have the ability to register. Um, you do not have to contact anyone. It should automatically go through. If you're struggling to understand what holds are on your account, we can help you. The Dean of Students Office is getting very good at reading the back end of Banner. So if you have more questions about holds, you can either call us at 915-747-5648 or you can email dos at utep.edu. Perfect, thank you, Matt, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So we did get another question and I think we can have one of our um, CAPS representatives answer this one. The question is, good morning, I have some classmates that would find the information on mental health helpful. Will we have access to the PowerPoints? And so um, I wanna let you all answer that and pertain, um, as it pertains to any PowerPoints you all have, but as it pertains to today's presentation, yes, we will post the presentation on our website. Our website is utep.edu slash SELC, and we will provide the presentation available to download so you can have those resources from the different departments. Um, but our representatives from CAPS, do you all wanna provide any other information about what resources you have for our students? Yes, of course. Good good morning, miners. This is Jorge Marquez. I'm the assistant director of CAPS. And it's a great question. We do have access to some of the PowerPoints. And as Selena had said earlier, we will be doing a lot more virtual presentations and workshops for the students. Now, uh, if you go to the CAPS to go portion of our website, that's where we'll be uploading a lot of the presentations that we'll be creating for students. Some of them will have recordings. Some of them might also be the presentations from the actual workshop. Now, if there's something there that you attended and you don't find the presentation, you can always email us at caps at utep.edu and ask us for the presentation and we'll be able to get that presentation to you directly. Mallory, can I also just add that um, Dr. Marquez and his team have really put together some strong um, support groups that I really encourage if you are on this um, presentation, you have friends that are um, that want um, good access to mental health services, but aren't maybe um, wanting to start a therapeutic relationship individually. The, the support groups are really a good way that's like a, a middle ground to give students that support without them necessarily feeling like they're going to therapy. And I think some of our students could really benefit right now from that collective um, group contact, um, particularly if they're living alone or they typically were a, sort of a social introvert and they're not getting that that itch right now um, able to be scratched because they can't interact with other people. So or I think Dr. Marquez's team is really there and available to help those students connect with other students. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree. Um, students, if you're not ready yet to maybe in, get engaged in counseling with a therapist, we do have those support groups that are going to be starting on Monday and Tuesday. Monday will be the English speaking one and Tuesday will be the Spanish one. And for the support groups, again, you don't have to commit to every week. We plan on having those support groups on a weekly basis, but you can decide to do one or two of them. If you like them, you can, you can engage them all summer long if you'd like. Um, and I would I would recommend if you do end up liking it, then you know give us a call and get set up with a counselor. It, it's really beneficial. I think one of the common questions that we get is, will I be speaking to a counselor each week? Is it going to be a different counselor? Is it the same counselor? And and of course we try to assign a counselor to each student, and so that there's continuity in the topics that are discussed and the treatment goals that are created. And so that's the way that we do it. Now, we also have a feature right now where you can also call in and speak to a counselor, maybe on 
uh, just a one-time basis, that, that is something that we're offering also. So somebody does not have to commit and talk to us every single week. If you feel like maybe once a month you need to call in and talk to a counselor, you could definitely do that. And I would encourage you again, call our number 747-5302 to do that. Perfect, thank you both. So we, um, I think we're still waiting to see if anybody else has additional questions, but we had made it through the Dean of Students office with some of your most commonly asked questions. Um, I wanna turn it over now maybe to the Student Health and Wellness Center. Daniela, do you wanna share one or two commonly asked questions um, and the answer to that? Sure, um, so one of the questions that we get are those students who are worried because they're gonna be starting in a clinical setting and they have to meet their compliance requirements. We are still taking in students for that. We understand that you have a deadline to meet those compliance requirements. It is by appointment only though. Um, so if you have any questions regarding your clinical compliance requirements because your discipline requires you to have background tag, a drug screen, um, TB test, some titers, um, go ahead and give us a call. We can help out with that. Again, our phone number is 747-5624. Our Student Health and Wellness Center is still open for that and other appointments. If you have minor injuries, if you don't have a health care provider, you can still go to us. We're still open for, for all of you. Wonderful. Thank you, Daniela. And then Dr. Marquez or Selena, do either of you want to share maybe your most commonly asked question right now and the answer to that? Sure, of course. Some of the other questions that we've gotten recently, you know, are you offering just video check-ins or phone check-ins? And um, um, we're moving definitely to providing therapy through video. I think we, you get a lot more out of that. But like I said, if maybe you're not, don't have the capability or maybe still a little shy about that, we do offer kind of calling in on, you know, limited basis opportunities. Um, but again, I would encourage students to really take advantage of our workshops, of our support group, if you're not ready to fully engage with the therapist in therapy. And if you are, um, go ahead and make that leap. I wanna remind everybody that our services are confidential and free of charge. I mean, there, it is part of your tuition, but you do not get an additional charge for engaging in therapy. And so I would definitely um, encourage students, even if they have questions, just to reach out to us and we can answer those questions that they might have. Great, thank you, Dr. Marcus. Anyone else have any more uh, most frequently asked questions right now that they'd like to share? Um, and then again, our attendees, you can use that Q&A feature to submit any new questions for us to answer. Again, if we don't know the answer to the question right away, we will make sure that we get you that answer and make sure that it's added to the FAQ that is currently being built by our university communications team. Hi, Mallory, it's Sonia. Um, I wanted to add uh, another resource that we have as a Student Health and Wellness Center. Um, we actually have our healthcare providers um, giving virtual tabling, and they're doing that through Facebook Live sessions on Facebook. So if anyone has any general health-related questions, they can absolutely submit their questions during those live sessions on Facebook. We do post in advance when they're going to be helped. That way students know about them and, they, um, and they're able to log in. So that's another resource that we're also doing through social media. We're, we're trying to keep up with our outreach efforts and um, our healthcare providers used to table um, on campus. So now they're, they're doing it on Facebook. Wonderful, thank you, Daniela. Another resource that I wanna share with you all, and we will put the link in the question and answer, answer session so you can see that, um, is our Miners on Monitors project. So we have just started a Miners on Monitors core activities page. So for those of you that are, um, out, everyone at home, if you're looking to do something outside of your schoolwork, outside of other things you might be doing, um, you're tired of Netflix, maybe tired of watching TV, um, we have this Miners on Monitors page. It's utep.edu slash mom. And you can go to that website and every week we have a full list of activities, whether it's social media campaigns or workshops that you can join. There are a number of things that you can get involved in at the university to keep yourself engaged, to keep developing yourself. Right now, Dr. Wilson has said it the best, 
Professional development is important for all of us. We may be going to school at home or working from home, but it's important for us to keep um, sharpening our mind and developing and growing ourselves. So we hope that you all will check out that website, utep.edu slash M-O-N for our Miners on Monitors programs. It's updated weekly. So Monday mornings, you can log in and see a brand new set of events happening that week that you can join, plan your schedule um, and get engaged. We did get one additional question. Um, so someone asked, Dr. Marcus, do you mind uh, repeating what you said about where they can find therapy? Absolutely. I wanted to check. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yeah, so again, for therapy, you have students, as long as they're registered for one class, they have access to um, therapy services from CAPS. And so the best way to do that, you could call. 915-747-5302 and ask to speak to a counselor. Now you can schedule an appointment if you would like, or if you need to talk in the moment, there is always a counselor available to speak with students. And then we will take it from there, depending on what the student needs. If the student wants to continue ongoing therapy, we will schedule follow-up appointments with them. And students typically are assigned a counselor, that way there is continuity in their treatment. Now, if a student is just calling in for a one-time thing, that is something that we also offer. Somebody does not have to kind of commit or engage with counseling. And as earlier, you had Matt Kraus and Selena talk about our support groups that are gonna be beginning. I would encourage students to do that. And that's a confidential way to doing it as well. You know, you could kind of mute your, um, your screen if you don't want to be seen and kind of listen in on what is going on. The, the support groups will be um, led by two counselors and so we'll, we'll have two counselors present and again we're we're hoping to keep the group down to between you know eight to twelve students possibly we're talking about 10 max for the support groups and so yeah, if you are thinking about it um, please sign up as quickly as you can and of course if the groups do end up being very popular and they um, en end up filling up we will open up more spots we've got counselors who are willing and able and ready to um, provide more groups for the for the students. We will have therapy groups also starting the second week in June. And so also, if you have interest in that, please contact us so that you can get signed up for those groups. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Marcus. And then just so you all know, in the live Q&A feature, our moderator did post the link to the CAPS website and also that phone number. So you can pull that phone number on the website directly from our Q&A feature. And um, we also did put up our website for utep.edu slash M-O-M, our Miners on Monitors campaign, so you all can go ahead and check that out. We'll wait just a few more minutes. If anyone else has some additional questions, we'd love to hear from you. Um, again, we're here to help and support, and we want to know what you need from us, what you need to hear, um, what are some questions that you're you're wondering about, worried about, that we can get you answers for. Anyone on the panel? Go ahead, I Matt. was going to say, I was going to plug a couple of different things. Um, as you know, I work with the student government, and one of the things that they want to encourage students, and you'll see probably shortly, um, some information on our social media, both their the senator and 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 executive boards, um, social personal social media, but also our our general account is continuing to to let your your um, friends know that um, UTEP continues to be open. Um, we're seeing really good registration in terms of the summer because many of us will continue to be on computers. So um, continue to register for summer classes. Many of you know that those will all be in online format, um, but um, both for fall and spring, I really encourage folks to continue to connect with their academic advisor um, to get registered for classes. Um, we are, as a university, having preliminary conversations about what it would look like to reopen the university come the fall, um, and so or potentially, you know, later in the summer. And so um, those conversations are including some of the folks from student government. Um, but right now, um, getting folks registered for the summer for online classes um, is definitely a priority. So if you need more information uh, related to that, again, you can reach out um, to the basic university admissions um, information, or you can contact us in the Dean of Students office um, and we'll get you connected um, where you can where you can register for classes. Wonderful. Thank you, Matt.
Alrighty, so I think we have received almost all the questions we might receive today. Um, again, I just want to thank everyone for joining us this morning and thank all of our presenters for taking the time to share this important information with our students. Um, as a reminder, we're here for you. We're here to support you all. Um, we're very proud of all of our students for rising up to the challenge and just doing what they do best during this challenging time, um, you know, continuing with your degree and just con continuing to be the best student you can be. Um, we're here for you. We're here to support you. So please just let us know how we can help you. Again, your faculty and staff are, are ready. We're ready to help you, ready to provide you resources and make sure that your continued experience here at UTEP is a successful one. So feel free to reach out to all of us. We did put a lot of links in the chat feature um, in case you all wanted to check those out and connect with us and let us know how we can help. I hope you all have a great Friday and a great rest of your weekend. Um, please send us suggestions for our next town hall so that we can provide additional resources for you all. But have a good weekend and go Miners. Bye everyone.